In this video, I would like to show you the diffractive multifocal add-on IOL implantation. In this particular case, the highly myopic patient had a cataract operation five years ago. A monofocal IOL was implanted in his left eye, giving him a full visual acuity with a post-operative refraction of minus 1.75. Together with the pre-existing myopia in his non-operated contralateral right eye, this slight post-operative myopia in his left eye worked well. But now the right eye has developed a cataract as well. What can you do now to achieve multifocality in both eyes? Phaco emulsification and diffractive multifocal IOL implantation on the cataractous eye is a standard option. But do you want to exchange the IOL on the monofocal pseudophagic eye after five years? Even after some months, an IOL exchange can be traumatic, especially if the posterior capsule has been opened, as it is here. Vitreous loss during the IOL exchange may be inevitable. We plan instead to leave the monofocal IOL in loco and place an add-on diffractive IOL in front of the capsular back IOL. This special add-on IOL needs to fulfill two tasks to correct the remaining refractive error regarding distance and to provide reading ability up close. This operation has six steps. A self-sealing temporal incision is created. This can be done either with a clear corneal or a posterior limbal technique with all standard blades. Maximum pupil dilatation is desirable. We like to flush the anterior chamber with an adrenaline BSS solution. The anterior chamber is filled with highly viscous OVD. Then the sulcus is opened with an OVD depot. Remember that the posterior capsule has already been opened. So caution is taken not to open the capsular bag with OVD and not to apply too much pressure on the capsular bag IOL and the vitreous behind the IOL. Two paracentesis incisions are made. The cartridge is filled with highly molecular viscoelastic all the way. We use the Hoya injector system to implant the Schmidt Human Optics add-on IOL. The add-on IOL has two features in this case. In the first place, it corrects the refractive error for the distance, 1.75, corresponding to minus 2.5 in the IOL plane. That has remained after cataract removal and IOL implantation five years ago. Secondly, the add-on has a diffractive element on the surface that provides the near vision ability. This Fresnel type optic has a power of 3.5 within the eye, which implies a comfortable reading distance for the patient of about 35 cm in front of the eye. This special add-on IOL does not behave like a capsular bag IOL placed in the sulcus by accident, but is specially designed for the sulcus. The 7 mm optic is big enough to prevent iris capture and the silicon body is very thin, around 500 micron, and rounded to avoid any iris chafing or pigment dispersion. The 14 mm PMMA haptics fit into every sulcus and secure a perfect centration of the diffractive element. Of course, also independent of capsular back shrinkage. The add-on is seized by a forceps and inserted into the cartridge without bending the long haptics. The add-on lies in the cartridge like a crescent. The stamp of the injector pushes the optic gently forward until the leading haptic can be seen in the front part of the cartridge. The tip of the cartridge is introduced entirely into the anterior chamber. Doctors used 
to implanting acrylic materials should remember that a silicon optic can unfold quite suddenly and therefore has to be pushed into the anterior chamber very smoothly. First, the injector is turned a little bit anti-clockwise to let the leading haptic slide into the sulcus. For the next step, it is absolutely mandatory to turn the injector clockwise to the right to let the silicon optic unfold slowly in the correct plane parallel to the capsular back IOL. By not turning the injector clockwise, one runs the risk of an upside down implantation and even an ethereal injury by the following PMMA haptic. In this part of the implantation process, it is also essential not to push on the silicon optic too much. The injector stamp is moved forward slowly in a stop and go manner to let the optic unfold corresponding to its own material elasticity. In doing so, the second haptic unfolds automatically and can easily be dialed into the sulcus as well. The OVD has to be removed to avoid a post-operative pressure rise. We use a bimanual approach to access the OVD between the IOLs more easily. The add-on centration is usually immediately perfect and permanently stable as well and not influenced by changes of the capsular bag. The add-on optic is curved on the posterior surface so that the add-on does not touch the capsular bag IOL optic anywhere. This safety gap between the optics is constant over time as published in the JCRS 2010. The monofocal capsular back IOL is still well positioned and the opening of the posterior capsule and the vitreous are unaltered. A few days after the add-on implantation, visual acuity is 1.0 or 20-20 for both, for the distance and for the near without any glasses. In the next step, the contralateral cataractus eye of the patient is treated with phacoemulsification and capsular bag implantation of a diffractive multifocal IOL. With diffractive optics in both eyes, the patient sees 1.2 or 25 over 20 binocularly for distance and for near. In summary, the patient is able to manage his daily life entirely without glasses now.